Okay, so I'm um, <coughs> I'm just leaving home. Got a long trip ahead, about four four and a bit hours uh, to get from Southampton up to the Hope Valley, and I'm hoping to park in Hope, and then I've got about a four mile trek or so. I'm expecting it to be relatively mild, about 11 degrees. Um, don't think don't think there's an awful lot of wind uh, forecast. It should just be a bit a bit dull and grey and similar for the morning uh, as well possibly foggy might well be foggy in the morning so just leaving hope just past hope cemetery and on my way up uh, this very dark enclosed country lanes and just beautiful autumn colors in the trees here so uh, just starting out i think i've got about three and a half to four mile walk mostly uphill ahead of me and a walk parallel to the uh, to the railway line for a little while and then uh, up on our head skirting around the edge of where Hope Valley and I think Edale kind of join heading up into these hills I'm gonna go along what I think is called the Roman Road up to Hope's Cross turn left uh, towards Jagger's and the next time I saw her, she bid me goodbye. But the last time we're not now to the place where the uh, half divides, I think. Just getting to the end of the lane, and we split here. There's a path that goes kind of takes a higher route up the side of the, the hill and uh, I'm going to take the low road so I made the decision during the night that I was going to leave leave Southampton much earlier because the clock's just changed which meant that uh, I'm going to lose an hour of daylight and it's a rather longer journey than I originally thought it was going to be. I'm just going to change the angle of view here so you can see these beautiful uh, autumn colours in the bracken behind me as I as I walk. They're absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, so longer trip, less in the way of daylight. Ah, it just means it's going to be an early bed. I feel like an early bed tonight because it's certainly going to be dark by, really dark by six o'clock I think at the latest. So for the last sort of quarter of a mile or so, I've been walking up steadily in this kind of sunken lane, not being able to see past the heather, and I'll come to this little passing place. It's obviously a bridle way, lots of signs of uh, bikes and stuff going up there, and it's uh, very muddy. Um, sort of cobbles underneath the, or on the surface at times. I think this is what was once a Roman road. This path's getting really quite difficult to uh, to navigate. I'll switch the uh, I'll switch the view row around and show you what I've been walking through. So it's all looking a bit uh, a bit wet, slippy, potholed, and very treacherous. Time is about uh, it's about five to three, and uh, I've done just over two miles or so on this road. This is indeed the Roman road according to my ordnance survey. So I have uh, gradually been adapting the kit that I'm walking in and with uh, and uh, it'll develop over time but I found that last time out I just couldn't get a drink of water when I wanted it because it was slung on my back and that meant Stopping and getting a rucksack off was a complete pain in the neck. So, so I've now slung the water bottle on the on the front of my uh, rucksack, main rucksack strap, and uh, 
And in similar spirit, I've strapped some other things uh, to it as well that makes them a lot more accessible. In a land of Bokan, where bleak mountains rise, or those brown ridgy tops now, the dusky cloud fly, deep sunk. I believe that that boundary wall just up there, that, that is Hope's Cross. That's my first main navigation point. And her name was Vanola, the gem of the road. From the eyes of a beauty appeared to our view. A youth clad in Titan, it's strange but it's true. With a star on his breast and unstrung was his bow. There we go. Very different landscape. Quite out of breath. And uh, time's knocking on. Five past four. And I left that two hours later. I would be hopelessly out of time. Well, just stopping for a bit of a break here because this is a steep climb. This is like Evering Bell and then Sun. I think I've probably got about another uh, 60, 70 metres of climb at least before I reach the, uh, the summit here. And uh, this is where Mad Women's Stones are, so I've got to do it. Time is getting on. It's 20 past four. Need to be there before sunset. Da, da, da. This will give you some idea of how, how steep it is. Wow. That was a steep climb, and I just wish that I had the views to pay for it or as reward for it. But I'm at this sort of craggy bit now, and uh, yeah, nearly there, nearly there, getting there. <laughs> well, it's been a long day, um, much longer walk than I thought it was going to be. Um, I've done good five miles to get here. Um, I must admit I'm pretty tired. Um, it's pretty much dark by the time I managed to get the tent set up so it's kind of a bit of deja vu with the last thing. So I'm just making a brew and uh, I mean, it's so dark so early now it's only about 5.30 uh, in the evening, 5.40 something like that. So long evening ahead but it's going to be, gonna be nice. Uh, I got here um, and uh, there was a group of four people standing at the uh, at the stones, <laughs> and uh, and I said, "Do you know? I think I'm going to have to eat my hat now." And they looked at me a bit quizzically, and I said, "Well, that's because as I was right, as I was sort of approaching here, I was thinking, if there's anyone else out here who's as mad as me uh, to be out here in this fog at this, uh, you know, in the dark, um, then I'm going to have to eat my hat." Anyway, it turns out that they're doing some kind of night navigation exercise so they weren't kipping here so uh, so at the moment at least uh, I have this place to myself obviously the tents up as you can see I've had my soup and I've had my rice meal um, I didn't stick them all in together because the flavors were just too different <laughs> I, had a, I had a beef and vegetable soup and some kind of spicy Mexican curry thing and um, I'm not convinced they'd have done well in the same pan. So uh, so I had those quite separately. Covered a bit now. Um, so it's amazing what a cup of tea, some soup and a, and a meal will do. Um, I haven't even got my big camera, my Nikon D800 out at all as yet because we just haven't had the light. And, um, and by the time I got here, um, and finished up setting up the tent it was pitch dark so um. well good morning 
it's about uh, 20 past six and uh, it's a very different morning to last night so the, uh, we've got nice or well, pretty clear sky and we've got a nice little sunset sunrise rather a nice little sunrise starting to happen over there and then in the uh, in the valleys there in Hope Valley and Edale we've got quite a thick fog with just these peaks sticking up out of it and I'm just going to see whether I can get any of that on camera This is fog, I think, rather than the cloud inversion, but um, it just looks beautiful. The sky's really colouring up now. Time for a bit more photography. Well, I've just watched this as the sun rose and uh, literally just pipped up, popped up over the horizon. And it was just the most amazing moment. I almost forgot to take any photographs. I just laughed out loud. <laughs> just brilliant. As a lonesome scenes of winter. So that's the, uh, that's the campsite over there and what we're looking at now. Bathed in early morning sunlight is uh, Mad Woman Stones. Quite why it got called that, I don't know. Just look at the colours in this, these grasses here. It's just amazing. It just looks completely artificial. <laughs> but that's what it is. Really kind of pinky uh, grasses, just really highlighted by the sun now. One night I went to see my love But he proved more scornfully I asked him if he'd marry me But he would not marry me The night it is clean sight this is I found it last night no visible trace not a bad pitch in the end so I am uh, not able to use my gimbal right now so it's a little bit shaky but... oh. so uh, I'm kind of looking north here and just down there the pathway sort of pathway that I came up yesterday so yesterday evening I made a decision last minute not to use Jagger's Clough and uh, oh, I went a fairly roundabout route to uh, Madwoman's Stones and um, that turned out I think to be a good decision because I've just had a look at Jagger's Clough and it pretty much goes down this very rocky ravine really you basically have to um, walk the stream and uh, it's a bit like uh, a bit like canyoning really and um, but with a bit less water I'm taking a similar route to what I did 
yesterday slightly more southerly and um, I think it's going to end up and be quicker and a lot safer. Oh, another grouse. There's a nice little silhouette of trees on the hillside over there. And I just wish that I had my long lens to pick them out with. But I don't, so there we go. Definitely a, a good decision to take this route rather than Jagger's Clough. It really looked dangerous and the going is just so much quicker here. So just in the uh, distance ahead of me there over about the center of that clump of trees ahead um, is uh, Hope's Cross and ahead of me right now on this path um, not at the next gate but the one beyond that is going to be where I got to make a decision yesterday about whether or not to use Jagger's Clough Must have been walking for about an hour and three quarters so far. I'm thinking I probably just covered a couple of miles, partly because of the terrain and um, partly because I just haven't been able to resist stopping to take photographs and uh, little, sort of little bits of video. And that's okay, you know, it's. Uh, it's not every day you get the opportunity to do this, so uh, so why not? Five mile walk. I'm at the cafe adventure, ready for some flapjack and a lovely Americano. Yeah, what a great way to finish a really beautiful morning. I'm gonna have a coffee and cake and then I'm off to York. See my farm. 